Hey, howdy guys, Connor McCaskill here, and today I am joined by Cam Mackey, who has a beautiful camera. Tell me what you got here. This is the Fujifilm GFX 100. It's basically an X-T3 on steroids with the medium format sensor, but it's also stabilized. Yes, that's really exciting. So Cam was fortunate to get this camera on loan from Fuji. And so you're actually more of a photographer. Yep. If you want a really awesome photography YouTube channel, I'll leave his channel linked down below in the description. You should definitely check it out, but I'm definitely more video. So I wanted to compare my X-T3 versus the GFX 100 to see how they compare. This is micro four thirds versus medium format. So it should be pretty interesting. We're gonna do 24, 60 and 120 tests side by side. So without any further ado, let's begin. So it seems that this um, Ronin SC is not going to be able to hold the Fujifilm uh, GFX 100, which I kind of had a feeling just because of the sheer size of it. This thing is actually a little taller than even the EOS R is. You can kind of see if I'm holding it there. And um, you know, the weight difference is completely different. Like the body itself for the GFX 100 is fairly light, but the lens makes a huge difference in weight. So because of that, this is the Ronin SC. I feel like if we had the Ronin S or the Feutech AK4500, we'd be able to very easily throw this on there. But because this is the Ronin SC, you can see very easily that this is way too heavy. Like this is just me letting it rest. And this is me trying my best to get everything on the dot. This is really tight. So I'm having to really stretch out my arm here. But basically all that to say, I cannot put that camera on the gimbal, which I just shot all my X-T3 stuff on the gimbal. Good thing is this camera has internal stabilization. So we're going to throw it on a switch pod and try our best to get the same shots, but keep that in mind for these tests. Okay, so we've been playing around with the GFX 100 for video and we've really learned a lot when it comes to shooting video on this camera. Do you mind talking a little bit about what we discovered? Yeah, so I would say it's more equivalent to the X-2.2 yeah. rather than the X-T3. I mean, you still have your, your H.265 and your 400 megabytes or megabits per, per second. But otherwise, I just noticed that the buttons glow in the back of here. Oh, wow, yeah. That's cool. Nice. Are they glowing? No, uh, that's just white. Uh, <laughs> anyway. You, you just keep going. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the image stabilized sensor um, actually isn't that great for video. It's very jello-y, at least on this wide. We have, we're rocking the 23 F4. Right. Um, and Although so, the wider it is, typically the better, yeah, better it should to be. So, so, yeah. And then autofocus wise, it's weird the eye focus is really good on this. Right. But 
otherwise for the video, we were missing folks a lot and we, we messed with the autofocus speed and tracking and I don't know. It's just, yeah, again, I would say it's more clone to the X-T2, but that's if, that's for running gun. Yes. I would say if you're gonna do like an actual cinema setup with the whole V-mount battery and, and, um, and your bars and everything, and you're doing manual focus, like the image quality that's coming out of this would still look pretty good. Actually, I would say it would look rather incredible because yeah. you're still getting a beautiful image out of this camera. Yeah. The problem is, is we were doing a very run and gun style and it's of course not suited. It, I mean, it wasn't designed for that. We were really just kind of yeah. pushing it to see what it could do. We did find out that it doesn't shoot 120 frames per second. No, it doesn't. Uh, I really thought it did. For some reason, I had it in my head that the GF, uh, GFX 100 had the exact same specs as the X-T3. As the X-T3. In fact, we all kind of had that in our head, so I don't know yeah. where that came from. Also, it doesn't shoot 4K60. Yeah. Which is interesting. It's shot 2K60. Yeah. Which, I mean... Isn't bad. Yeah, but still, like, I'm sure, I bet within 6 to 12 months, they do a firmware, though, where it, they do give that. Because I think it's totally capable. Right. So... Yeah, I mean, the, the processor inside this thing is really, really good. Yeah. It should be able to handle it. Because, again, the eye focus is actually really good on it. Right. Which is... It confusing why the other autofocus modes weren't working too well. Right. So I'm thinking it's more firmware stuff, exactly. but it's totally cable. And you gotta remember too, this is medium format glass. So there's the glass is bigger than anything else. It's very heavy and you would think it's sluggish and for it being medium format glass is actually pretty snappy. Right. Yeah, I mean, as far as medium formats go, this is ridiculously fast. For video, fast. yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculously fast, but when we're comparing it to the X-T3, which you guys should be able to see in the footage, and the X-T3 is designed to yeah. be a snappy run and gun. Yeah. But really also, nice we, we did have this on a gimbal. Yes. This is a lot heavier. The body itself isn't that heavy, but the lens is way heavier. Right. And so it, that makes it awkward to balance on a gimbal. I have the AK4500 by Feutech, so mm -hmm. this that would have been able to go on there. I forgot that, though. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we were we were thinking we would have that, but then we tried th balancing it on the Run SC, and you guys saw yeah, it didn't work no out. Way. So I ended up just hooking a switch pod to it for extra stabilization. <laughs> kind of worked, yeah. kind of didn't work. I don't know. It's a little goofy. Yeah. So in short, the GFX 100 isn't a running gun camera. Who no, knew? Yeah. It's definitely more a photographer's camera, yeah. as you've discovered. It's a beautiful photography yeah. camera at that. Um, maybe a little ridiculous. You also have the 50R. I have the 50R, and I, I kind of prefer the 50R. I mean, this is very fast and and snappy. Um, yeah, that's straight. But uh, this, I don't know. If if I was gonna do a commercial shoot, I would rent this. Uh, but just again, file size and everything. Majority of my stuff is like smaller brands or or like smaller shoots. And so this is very realistic for me. Right. So this, I am gonna rent it for photo shoots, but for video work though, um, I'm either gonna use the X-T3 or my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Right. Yeah. So uh, I hope you guys learned something from this test. Obviously it was a bit of an unfair comparison in both regards. Yeah. I mean, we're using a thousand dollar camera versus a $10,000 yeah. camera. And then we also had this on a gimbal and that wasn't on a gimbal. So all around, it wasn't really that fair of a test, but it was still a lot of fun. Yeah. We really enjoyed shooting this test. Let me know down in the comment section if you want to see more content on the GFX 100. Maybe we actually rig it out and yeah. see how that looks. I, that's what I was going to say. Maybe we do a cinema rig right. with this manual focus and then we see what the image quality is compared to putting the X-T3 on the same rig like that. Exactly. So maybe a little more fair of a comparison. Let us know in the comments if you want to see that. Also, be sure to follow Cam on Instagram. I'm going to put it somewhere here or over here and also follow his YouTube channel. He's grinding out the content much faster than I am actually. So definitely be sure to check Mine's him out. Mine's not as good as his though, and, so. Well, you know, <laughs> quality and quantity. Yeah. yeah. Kiss him already. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got something out of it. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. And as always, thanks for hanging.